holy. Be Holy is a broadcast ministry of believers dedicated to saving the souls of all men and women. We teach the words of God that people all over the world may hear the voice of God and obey Him. God doesn't want to show us His wrath or His anger. He just wants us to repent and be holy. And after one repents, he or she can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. But certainly not before they repent. Listen, we really can't even discuss prayer until one repents. Yes, hell is making its way towards the unrepentant heart. But it is Be Holy's commandment and mission to warn everybody. Not to control, to warn. The Word of God is spirit and it's life. That's why we take the Word of God seriously. We're not using shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We're not trying to trick anyone or... Or change the word of God. We tell the truth before God and all those who are honest and live by truth. They know the truth. They realize that we are telling the truth. Listen, friend, we've been preaching and teaching for over 20 plus years and the Lord Jesus is satisfied with our efforts and we want to keep it that way. Next on Be Holy. Teach and preach the good news to everybody. Be Holy. All right, listen, we want to welcome everybody back. Be Holy. We are glad that you are here with us on today. Today is a sunny but cool day here in Columbus. Sunny but cool. But listen, don't you pay that no never mind. You make sure your day is splendid. You make sure your day is splendid, whether it be cold, hot, or indifferent. Just thank God for today. Thank God for the week. Thank God for the year. Thank God for this month. Just thank God for it. And then you won't uh, just always find the bad parts of the day or whatever. Even though today's a good day, there's still bad things that happen to people. But that don't mean you have to concentrate on it. That doesn't mean that. All that means is you have more to pray about, more to talk to God about. When you do get a chance to talk to him, you have more to talk to him about. Lord, you know, on Tuesday, this, that, and the other day. Lord, you know, on Wednesday, this happened. And Lord, you know, on Friday, this happened. You know, talk to him. Listen, we all need to talk to the Lord. We all need to talk to him. And trust me, he wants to talk to all of us. He wants to. Yeah, he does. You know, uh, he didn't make us for just to be on earth. He made us on earth because he wanted us to be here. And now that we're here, he makes provisions for us. He gives us gifts, gave us the whole world. He gave us everything, right? He gives us life and, and saves us all these other things. He gives us children, gives us businesses. I mean, he gives us all these things, he gives us churches, he gives us community, he gives us homes, he gives us friends, family. I mean, all these things he gives us, right? Because he loves to see people happy. He loves seeing them happy. But a lot of times when we get happy, we misuse what he gave us or gives us and we get sad again. And so, you know, we got to talk to him to keep us up. We have to talk to him. Surely uh, money is good and everything. Having a job is good and having uh, wealth and having a company and having a uh, um, something to wake up for in the morning, something to push you to. I mean, that's great. But you're still going to have to talk to God sooner or later. You're going to have to talk to him. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find out what he would teach people when he came down to earth. Because before he was up in heaven. So now he's he came down to earth when we're reading in the Bible. He came down to earth. And so let's just see. And I'm sure he was already here on earth, but we saw him in bodily form on earth. Okay. Um, Luke chapter four, verse 18. Uh, Well, no, let's read uh, verse 16. And when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue or to church or whatever you want to call it on the Sabbath day and stood up to read the scriptures. He stood up there to read. So it must have been a custom for him to do that. So verse number 17, the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet was handed to him and he unrolled the scroll and found where the place was that was written this here. Uh, Verse number 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor for me to bring good news to the poor. And so good news to the poor isn't always money. That's what people think. They think it's money, but it's not always money. The good news to the poor is good news that they're going to have the very thing that they don't have. They're going to be given the very thing that they don't have. So not necessarily money, but salvation. See, the poor, we were poor because none of us had salvation. None of us had any 
salvation. None of us could reach into the bank and pull out salvation. We couldn't reach into our pocket and pull out salvation. Meaning, because remember the devil and his followers have a place to go that's heated. And so God has a place for his children to go that's not heated, right? So the good news is the very thing that we don't have God is going to make that very thing available to us and it's going to change our entire lives. That's a wonderful thing. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And that was all of us, really. All of us. You know, certain people, you know, had salvation. But certain people uh, believed the Lord. Some people were already righteous because they believed God. There were some people like that. But then there was another group of people who said, I will never be able to... Uh, have a good uh, relationship with God. God hates me or God doesn't like me or this, that, and the other. God's against me and I can't get past my troubles. I, I keep drinking too much and, it, and I keep doing this too much and it's, now I'm poor and I don't have this and I don't have that. Well, those same poor people could have been, you know, that I'm sure there's some poor people who have salvation, right? But then he's, the poor that he's talking about are the people who don't have salvation, people who don't believe God, forget salvation. The people who don't believe God are the poor. Those are the ones who don't believe. Those are the ones who are poor. They don't believe God. And so they're poor. And that poor is not money. The poor is uh, the salvation. They have no hope in ever getting past this life, being in this life and going to another life and, and having it better off. No. They're miserable in this life. No matter how poor or how rich they are, they're miserable in this life. And they're going to be miserable in the next life because they never believed God. They never trusted God and what he said. God made the whole world. You can trust what he says by the words he spoke. He made the world. And so if he told you a thing, if he told you something, if he told all humanity something, that one thing that he said or the two things that he said is going to come to pass, is going to actually come true. He's actually going to do it. And so he said from the beginning, I am going to save the world. The people are going to go into sin and I got to make a provision for them to get out of it. Do you believe me? Uh, yeah, I believe you. Uh, Abraham, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. He had to keep telling Adam. I, I, yeah, yeah, I believe you. So now God is coming. Now it's time. Now it's time to actually make good on his promise. And so God says here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be set free. You get it? The captives will be set free. Not those in prison that we set free, but those who are captive by the devil, those who are captive by not believing God will be set free because you will see that what God says is true. Now, if he has to open up heaven so that you can see or open your spiritual eyes so that you can see, so be it. But this is the time that all of this is going to happen. And that's what Jesus did. That's what he did. He actually was appointed from before the foundation of the earth. To come and die for the sins of the whole world. But long before they've sinned. Long before they got into sin. He had already set it up to where people would be forgiven. God has set it up. That's what he did. So he says here. He sent me to proclaim uh, that the captives will be released. That the blind will see. And, and so when he did miracles. It wasn't about the physical miracle that he was doing. It was all about the, the prophecy that people who didn't, who couldn't see what was going on in the world and couldn't see God and understand what God was saying before. Now they're going to begin to see because they're blind. And so when they begin to believe their eyes are going to open. But as an, as a token of that, right? As a sign of that, he would actually go and heal blind people. He would actually open their eyes so that they can see to remind them of this scripture that was read from Isaiah. What was it? I, uh, he has sent me to proclaim the cap, proclaim that the captives will be released, uh, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Now the Lord's favor is here. The Lord's favor is here. No wonder they were excited. No wonder they were happy. But the devil himself was upset because he knew that he only had a short while, and that's why they he. he he conspired to have Jesus killed, thinking that if he kills him, the people won't be free. If he kills Jesus, then uh, the the poor won't get the good news. If he kills Jesus, 
He won't be able to talk about the captives being set free. He, if he kills Jesus, he won't be able to talk about the oppressed being set free. He won't be able to do that, right? But the thing about it is because he died, all of those things could happen. Because he died, all the good news was going out to the poor. All the proclamation of the captives will be released. All the uh, the blind will see. And all these other things that was promised in that very little verse right there happened simply because Jesus gave up his life to die for the people. Because God says the soul that sins it has to die. And God says, but on the other hand, I have a way out. I got a way of escape for you. Even though my word is true, I still have a way of escape around my own word. So Jesus was the way of escape. Way of escape. God says anything, any soul that sins has to be uh, sent, sent away or, or die, right? And then Jesus shows up and God says, well, look, I, I told you I had a way for you to get out of it. Even though I had hell set up for the devil and his followers. But I'm going to make a way for those who don't follow him to get out of it. Just, just like the lot and the uh, uh, what was he? He was bargaining with God or was it uh was it lot? No, 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 no. It was Abraham bargaining with God over Sodom. Yeah, that's what he was doing. And so just like God says, he's going to do this. He's going to destroy it. The, well, then he made a way for those people who believed him to get out of there. Those who were following instructions, they got out of Sodom and Gomorrah. They got out. So it's the same thing with us now. God has made a way for us to get or to escape the uh, damnation of those who followed the devil. And so. And understand the devil is no equal to God or nothing. He's, the devil is everybody's enemy. He's not just God's enemy. He's everybody's enemy. And so uh, God made a way for us to escape what he had planned for somebody else. What he planned for the devil. He made a way to escape for those who did not follow him and would not follow him. You get what I'm saying? So God made a way and, and it was telling Jesus was telling everybody here. I am that way. You know, the truth and the life. You know, remember that? Remember all of that? That's what he was saying to him. I am the way. I'm the truth, way, the truth, and light. And so then you start talking about I'm the uh, the spirit of the Lord's upon me and I'm anointed to bring God's, the good news to the poor and all this. The devil didn't want that because the devil knew if God had already made that way and people obeyed what God said, mm -mm, mm -mm, they would escape. And God, the devil knows he can't escape. He knows his his days are short. His days are numbered. And so people, uh, he's going to try to keep us all blind to what God says. Keep us all doing what we want to do and not follow what God says so that we can end up where he's going to end up. And so God is saying, listen, follow my, follow my lead on this. I'm already making a way for you to get out. Thanks for listening to Be Holy with your host, Leonardo Butler. Our Be Holy podcast is at Podbean or contact us at beholy116 at gmail.com or 614-268-7757. Thanks for listening to Be Holy with your host, Leonardo Butler. And for your convenience, you can now text the word GIFT to 614-363-6133. Again, the word GIFT to 614-363-6133. And we thank you for your support. Be holy.